To all the pastors, theology students, and saints who have attended the Shincheonji Online Seminar, it is great to meet you. My name is Bae Yoo-jae from Village Tribe Shincheonji Church of Jesus, who will be today's host. First of all, to everyone who have attended this seminar, we sincerely thank you. Currently, the Old Testament, New Testament seminar are being held, and truly, so many people are sending enthusiastic responses. We trust that this is glory to God and also a great joy. Then now, to our Father God who has allowed this time, with a thankful heart, we would like to begin with a prayer. Our thankful and gracious Father God, today at this time, through the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter, online seminar, as you have guided the precious people, we firstly give you thanks. As your precious family in one heart share the word, please allow us a deep realization. What we all hope for is only to realize your will. Through all the word that are being testified, please allow us to become the true believers that can be acknowledged by you as we become born again. As there are many people around the world dreaming of the kingdom of heaven listening to this seminar, please allow us to realize once again about the purpose of faith and our hope and lead us to the kingdom of heaven that is testified by the Bible. Especially with the instructor, please allow your 
unlimited grace through the Holy Spirit, and please allow everyone who's hearing for their hearts to be moved and be filled, filled with the things that we need. Only at this time, Father, please receive glory all alone, and please allow your unlimited grace and love to be filled with us. With all these words we pray, in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, now it is a time to listen to the word. Continuing from lesson 5 last time, today, it will be the Intermediate Level Education, Lesson 6, the promised pastor of the Old Testament and New Testament. Today, as once again we go into the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, let us realize the true meaning of the 66 books of the Bible and its physical reality and receive much grace. Now we will greet o j e j u n instructor from Philly Tribe who will deliver the precious word. To all the pastors, theology students, and saints around the world who have the hope of kingdom of heaven and eternal life, it is great to meet you. My name is o j e j u n I am the head instructor of Chungju Church of Philip Chua Shincheonji Church of Jesus. To everyone attending the Shincheonji online seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, we sincerely thank you. The word that we will meditate together today will be Intermediate Level Lesson 6, Promised Pastors of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Main reference will be Matthew 1, Revelation 1, 1 1-3, Revelation 2 and 3, Revelation 10, and also Revelation 22, 16. There may be pastors who read much of the Bible and know well about today's topic, there could be some who are not well aware of. However, as you listen well to today's lecture, I hope that we can find out about the answers to God's will. So therefore, once again, let us open our hearts widely today and learn about who is the promised pastor of the Old Testament and the New Testament, how can we check, and also, most importantly, what is the relevance of this word and myself, let us certainly realize and have a precious time to receive grace. First of all, we would like to look into the key point of today's title. The promised pastor is referring to the pastor that God promised in advance in the Bible. In other words, it is the pastor promised in the Bible. The Bible, there are two broad promises, Old Testament and New Testament. The promised pastor promised in the Old Testament will be Jesus. The promised pastor promised in the New Testament is the messenger that Jesus promised to send for the churches. It is the one who overcomes. Then, the promised pastor of God, what kind of work does the promised pastor do? How can we recognize him? From now, let us look into it one by one through the Bible. In the Bible, there are broadly four types of pastors. Firstly, the prophetic pastor. then general pastor, and also promised pastor, and finally the false pastor we can divide. Firstly, the prophetic pastor, it is the pastor that God chose to tell in advance about what's going to happen in the future. In other words, it is the pastor who has a task to receive the word of prophecy and record it. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all these Old Testament prophets are prophetic pastors. Secondly, There's also the general pastor. It is a pastor that has a task to deliver what the promised pastor fulfilled. In terms of general pastors, from the time of Moses until the time of first coming, the pastors who delivered the law of Moses, and also from the first coming of Jesus until today, the second coming, there are those pastors who delivered the work of the first coming are all general pastors. Thirdly, it is a promised pastor. It is about today's topic, and also it is the most important pastor as well. The promised pastor is a pastor that God promised inside the Bible, promised through the prophetic pastor. The promised pastor in the Bible, it is the promised pastor of the Old Testament, and also the promised pastor of the New Testament. About this, we will learn in detail soon. And lastly, there's also the false pastor. 
As the name suggests, it is not the truth, but the pastor who teaches false truth, in other words, lies. It is Satan's pastor belonging to Satan. Today, at this time, we will learn about the promised pastor of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Firstly, at this time, let us learn about the promised pastor of the Old Testament first. Our pastors, we believe in Jesus, right? I also believe in Jesus. However, the name of Jesus is not prophesied inside the Old Testament. However, what is the reason why we can believe in Jesus as our Savior? About this, according to the Bible, let's find out. Let us read the words of John 5, 39. You diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me. Yes, you had read well. This Bible that Jesus referred to, the scripture, is referring to the scripture of the Old Testament. This Old Testament scripture, it says it testifies about Jesus. Likewise, inside of the Old Testament Bible, there is no word Jesus. However, there is many prophecies about one pastor that is promised throughout the Old Testament. And this word of prophecy was fulfilled by Jesus. Then, about the promised pastor of the Old Testament, what kind of prophecies were there? How were they fulfilled? About the prophecy and the physical fulfillment of Jesus inside the Old Testament, let's find out in detail. First of all, when we see the birth of Jesus in Isaiah 7 verse 14, it said, The virgin will give birth to a son. Now, according to this word of promise in Matthew 1, 18-23, at the time of the first coming, it was from the body of Virgin Mary, Jesus, who was conceived from the Holy Spirit and became born. And also in Micah 5 verse 2, this Savior will be born in Bethlehem was already promised. And at the time when Jesus was born, the Roman Emperor commanded a census. As such, Joseph and Mary who were living in Galilee, Nazareth, had to go all the way to Bethlehem. As we see in the words of Matthew 2, as we know very well, Jesus was born from a manger in Bethlehem, and thereby this word of prophecy was fulfilled. And the Magi from the east brought treasures and incense and myrrh and came and visited Jesus in Bethlehem. And also in Hosea 11 verse 1, it says, I will call my son out of Egypt according to this prophecy to fulfill it. The fact that there is a king of Israel that was born was proclaimed by the Magi from the east and King Herod who heard that commanded for all children, male children under two years old to be killed in Bethlehem. And Joseph and Mary who fled in order to escape from this killing by that that prophecy that the Son will come out of Egypt was fulfilled. This is written well in Matthew 2 verse 15. And also in the Old Testament, Zechariah 9 verse 9, it even prophesizes about Jesus entering into Jerusalem. According to Matthew 21, Jesus, according to that prophecy, rode on a foal of a donkey and entered into the temple of Jerusalem. Why was it not a big donkey, but a worthless-looking foal of a donkey, a baby donkey, and why did Jesus enter into Jerusalem like that? It may have seemed strange. However, all these things, it was a process of fulfilling the prophecies promised in the Old Testament. Not only that, God prophesied through the prophet Jeremiah about the creation of a new thing. To fulfill this, God prophesied in Jeremiah 31 to sow the seed, and Jesus did sow the seed of God's word in Matthew 13. Now through this, it was a corrupted world, a physical Israel that all came to an end. And through the seed of God's word, what began was the creation of the world of spiritual Israel. The reason was because it was our inner person who was born of the Jida sin. However, for us to be born again as God's children, born through the seed of God's word, such a creation happened. 
As we also see in Ezgil chapter 3, Ezgil receives the book of the open scroll and receives a command to deliver those words to the corrupted chosen people. This content that was prophesied through prophet Jer Ezekiel when it was fulfilled, according to Hosea 12 verse 10. God spoke parables through the prophet. It was not Ezekiel who received the book and delivered it, but there was a pastor, Jesus, who was figuratively described as Ezekiel, who received the book and delivered the word to the corrupted chosen people. As we see in Matthew 15 verse 24, According to the prophecy of Ezekiel, Jesus did receive the revealed word from God and delivered those words to the lost sheep of God's people, in other words, the corrupted chosen people, and by that the words of Ezekiel 3 were fulfilled. Also, as we see in Jeremiah 31, 31-32, it is prophesying to establish a new covenant. The people of Israel did not believe in Jesus who came according to the covenant of God of the Old Testament. As they sinned, Jesus, according to how it is recorded in Luke 22, 14-20, on the night of the Passover, through the blood of Jesus, Jesus made a new covenant. Through this, what was promised to Jeremiah, the word of prophecy to make a new covenant was fulfilled. This new covenant is referring to the New Testament. And among the words of the New Testament, the word that today's believers must know, it is the word of prophecy, promising about the future events, it is the book of Revelation. Even the first covenant, Old Testament, it was all fulfilled according to the words of prophecy. Likewise, this new covenant, the New Testament book of Revelation, it will certainly all be fulfilled I hope that our believers will all remember this. And also, as Jesus, on behalf of our sins, as He bore the cross and resolved the matter of sin, and through that blood, made a new covenant and left. And when Jesus was on the cross, in Matthew 27, verse 35, as Jesus' clothes were divided by casting lots, all this was also fulfilled according to what was recorded in Psalms 22, verse 18. Likewise, God, through Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, through these Old Testament prophets, He recorded these words of prophecy. And when the time came, at the time of the first coming, God came to Jesus and fulfilled all those words. In John 1, 32, as the Holy Spirit came down to Jesus like a dove, just like those words, God came to Jesus and fulfilled all the words of prophecies that were promised. Altogether, let's read John 19, verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Yes, thank you for reading. As Jesus, right before he died on the cross, he said, it is finished. Then, what is it that was all finished? That is, all the prophecies of the Old Testament, they were all fulfilled, is what he meant. As we acknowledge Jesus or the promised pastor of the Old Testament, the reason why we can do that is because Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies promised in the Old Testament. Then, that Jesus in the New Testament gave us a new promise, a new covenant. Today is the time, not the fulfillment of the Old Testament, but the fulfillment of the New Testament. Then, rather than the time of the first coming where the Old Testament was fulfilled, we should be even more interested and find out about the time of the second coming when the New Testament becomes fulfilled, isn't it? The part that I will deliver now will be the most important part of today's topic. It is a word that applies to today of today's time. It is about the promised pastor promise in the New Testament promised by Jesus. Even in the Old Testament Bible, there were many promises about Jesus. Likewise, in the New Testament for Gospel and also in the book of Revelation, there are many prophecies about the promised pastor in the book of Revelation. 
especially in Revelation, in each chapter, it all includes about the promised pastor, God, Jesus, and also all believers who believe in this word. When the prophecies become fulfilled, we must also learn about this word, isn't it? Then, from now on, about the four Gospels of the New Testament and inside the prophecies of the New Testament, Book of Revelation, how the promised pastors prophesied, we will find out together. All together, let's read Revelation 1, 1 to 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. There is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. Yes, first of all, in Revelation 1.1, this records about the root of how the revelation of the New Testament become delivered. Book of Revelation, it is Jesus' disciple, Apostle John, who recorded this revelation. In Revelation 1.1, it says, Revelation of Jesus Christ. This means Jesus revealed. Here, when it says revelation, it means to open and show. In God's hand, there was the prophecy of the book of Revelation that was sealed. But, that book, Jesus receives it and opens the seals and fulfills it, so therefore it is no longer a seal scroll, but it becomes an open book. And John, recorded this open book that he saw, which is the book of Revelation that Jesus opened and fulfilled. That is why it's a revelation that John recorded. Now in Revelation 1.1, it records about the root of how the revelation is conveyed, which can be shown through this drawing. First of all, the seal scroll that was in God's right hand, which was this book of Revelation's prophecy that was sealed in parable, so therefore no one was able to know, However, Jesus took that seal scroll in Revelation 5 and 6, opened it, and fulfilled it. Like this, 2,000 years ago, what was promised, the sealed word of the New Testament, as Jesus takes it, opens it, and reveals it, the prophecy now becomes fulfilled and the physical reality appears, and this becomes conveyed to the servants. And God wanted to show this fulfillment to the servants, which is the revealed word. So therefore, for God to show what must soon take place to the servants, He gave this open book to the angel, and the angel to John. And John received this open book and ate it, and thereby John becomes a pastor who received this open book, and now delivers what must soon take place to who? To the servants. This is a very important work. The reason why is because through that one pastor that is promised, that is like John, this is how Jesus' revelation becomes conveyed. Then, what is what must soon take place that the promised pastor will deliver? What must soon take place is referring to the events of the entire chapters of the book of Revelation. It says, what must soon take place is to be shown to the servants, then who will be these servants? As we see in Revelation 7, there are 12,000 in 12 tribes, and thereby these 12 tribes become sealed. Revelation 7 verse 4 referred to them as servants. So therefore, the one who seals, the one who is receiving the sealing, they all belong to the 12 tribes, they become God's servants. These servants are the 12 tribes, 144,000. Now, if we summarize the content so far, God, He wanted to show what must soon take place. In other words, the events of the entire chapters of Revelation to be shown to the servants was God's command. And thereby, according to that command, John, through the angel, delivered it all. Then, what is important here is, at this time of the fulfillment of Revelation, John, who receives this revealed word and conveys it, is not referring to the Apostle John of 2,000 years ago. Hosea 12 verse 10 says, God spoke parables through the prophets. Likewise, 2,000 years ago, Apostle John is figuratively used to describe 
the promised pastor of the New Testament Bible, which is New John. New John will be a name that we can call the promised pastor of the New Testament. Then as we see in Revelation 1 verse 2, New John testifies the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, everything that he saw. Now this, it means John is the one who speaks on behalf of God and Jesus. The word of God and the testimony of Jesus, in other words, everything that he saw becomes testified without adding or subtracting this new John is promised in the New Testament Bible. Also, as we see in verse 3, Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, it says. The words of the New Testament revelation was sealed through seven seals and parables for 2,000 years. No one in heaven or on earth was able to know its true meaning. However, the word of the prophecy of Revelation now can be read by someone. This does not mean simply reading a book. It means there is a person who knows its meaning. In other words, the one who mastered the words of Revelation. And its physical fulfillment will be New John who received the revealed word of the New Testament from Jesus. Through this New John, people are able to receive the testimony of this word, so therefore there is one person who reads it, but there are many who can hear it. Like this, the revealed word, there is the one who reads it, and those who hear it. However, the ones who are blessed are those who take it to heart, in other words, those who keep these words. So through this, we can see that all believers in the global village must now see, hear, and realize about the physical reality of this prophecy which we've been waiting for 2,000 years. Now such a time has come. At the time of the second coming of the Lord, Jesus works through the seven spirits and the seven stars of God. In Revelation 1 verse 20, these seven stars are mystery. They refer to the messengers of the seven churches. Likewise, Jesus appoints the seven messengers that were mystery and started his work. They are the messengers who prepare the way for the Lord at the time of the second coming. But as we see in Revelation 2 and 3, inside of the tabernacle of these seven messengers, there's the Nicolaitans group of Satan that enters in. And the seven messengers that Jesus appointed becomes one with the Nicolaitans and commits sin. At this time, Jesus selects one person. This one person is the one whom Jesus selects and with his right hand, he appoints from Revelation 1 verse 10 onwards, he is a promised pastor of the New Testament. Jesus, to this one pastor, shows all the content of Revelation 2 and 3 and its mysteries, and by that, also, commanded him to send the letters of repentance to the seven messengers. And also, this mystery is not told to anyone else, but only to this one person that is referred as John. Also, it is not only to repent, but also it is told to fight and overcome the enemy Nicolaitans. The reason why is because these seven messengers, they listen to the words of the enemy's Nicolaitans received food sacrifice to idols, and is teaching and committed sexual immorality with Satan. So therefore, to the seven messengers, telling them to repent and fight and overcome in the war against the Nicolaitans was done. And also, in the very location of the event, the one who fights and overcomes this group of Satan Nicolaitans becomes the one overcomes that appears. Inside of Revelation 2 and 3, the one who receives this promised blessings, it will be the promised pastor of the New Testament. What kind of blessing does a promised pastor receive? Let's read Revelation 2 verse 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. Yes, thank you for reading. 
When we see the content of the promised blessing, Jesus says to the one who comes, will give the hidden manna, which is the food of eternal life, and also the white stone, which is the authority to judge, and also the iron scepter, which is the authority to rule nations. And not only that, God, Jesus, and the kingdom of heaven will be together with the one who comes, and the one who comes will be able to sit together on the throne of Jesus. So therefore, at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, God, Jesus, and the kingdom of heaven is together with the one who comes. So therefore, finding the one who comes is the same as finding God, Jesus, and the kingdom of heaven. Like this, at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, finding this pastor, the one who comes, the promised pastor in Revelation 2 and 3, is a very important work. Also, as recorded in Revelation 10, the promised pastor of the New Testament is the one who received the open book that Jesus delivered through the angel, and he received the task to deliver the word of this book. At the time of the first coming, Jesus received and ate the open scroll of Ezekiel 3 and delivered those words to the corrupted people of the Israelites. However, in Revelation 10, it is not that Jesus eats and delivers the word, but rather it is John who receives and eats the open book and delivers it. This John is not Jesus, but rather it is the promised pastor of the New Testament of today, which is figuratively being described comparing to Jesus' disciple John. Jesus opens the seals from Revelation 6, opened the entire book, and fulfilled everything that is recorded inside of it. And through this angel, delivered this open book and gave it to John to read. And then it is now commanded he must deliver those words to many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. And thereby, Jesus fulfilled the prophecy, and John is the one who received the word and ate it, delivered it. What we must remember is that when this promise of revelation becomes fulfilled, that person who fulfills this words of prophecy is a promised pastor, New John. So therefore, this book is not in God's hand, nor with Jesus, nor with the angel, but it is inside the stomach of New John, isn't it? In other words, now, other than New John, nobody else has this book. So therefore, John is the one who is the only pastor who perfectly realized and mastered the prophecy and the fulfillment of the New Testament. He becomes the walking Bible. So therefore, as he received and ate this book, according to Revelation 22 verse 8, he's the one who has seen and heard all the events of this book. And to this new John, we must receive that testimony then we will also know clearly about the events of Revelation. And also, this word of testimony is the law of God that all believers in all nations must know and keep, isn't it? So therefore, Jesus promised to send His messenger for the churches. Let's read Revelation 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright morning star. Yes, thank you for reading. In Revelation 22 verse 8, as we see, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. At the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, New John is the one who has seen all the fulfillment of the book of Revelation as Jesus fulfilled every verse of it, he becomes the witness inside of Revelation who has seen and heard the fulfillment. And thereby, this pastor becomes Jesus' messenger who testifies what he has seen and heard. Jesus promised to send his messenger to the churches to testify all these things, in other words, the events of the entire chapters of Revelation. So therefore, there must be the work that Jesus' messenger gives a word of testimony, isn't it? Then, the messenger of Jesus that Jesus promised, in other words, the promised pastor, he's the one who ate the open book in Revelation 10. And he's the one who saw all its fulfillment at the place of the fulfillment. 
So therefore, he is able to testify the prophecy of the four Gospels and the book of Revelation and even its physical fulfillment. The one who is testifying all he saw and heard to the churches today is the promised pastor of Shincheonji. Then, now, as though if the promise of all the New Testament has been fulfilled through this promised pastor, then we must hear the testimony from the promised pastor and check it, isn't it? And if we checked it, and if it is correct, we must also believe in the prophecy and its physical fulfillment and be the ones who can be saved. Up until now, we have saw the promised pastor prophesied in Revelation. But not only in the book of Revelation, but also in the prophecy of the four gospels, especially in Matthew 24, there is a prophecy about the promised pastor. Matthew 24 is the content about the signs of the coming of the Lord at the second coming and of the end of ages. In verse 45, it speaks of the faithful and wise servant who will be in charge of the servants in the household, giving them the food at the proper time. When the master returned, he said, he will give all his possession to this servant. Then the master that will return is our Lord Jesus. Then this servant is not Jesus, it is Jesus' servant, we're able to know it is the promised pastor. Also, as we see in John 14 verse 17, New John is a pastor who is together with the Spirit of Truth that is promised to come. Jesus said 2,000 years ago that the Spirit of Truth, the Advocate will come and will teach us all truth and allow us to be reminded of everything that Jesus said. And also, that Spirit of Truth will be inside of you. In other words, will dwell in a person. In 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9, as it says, You are God's field, you are God's building. Likewise, Spirit works through this body as a house and works through the flesh. Likewise, this Spirit of Truth, the Advocate, will work through one pastor, and that pastor will be used as a flesh who speaks on behalf and delivers the words of Revelation. So therefore, the new John, who is the pastor who speaks on behalf today, becomes the Advocate in flesh, whom the Spirit of Truth, the Advocate, is together with. And by this, this is a work of the Spirit of Truth, the Advocate, that Jesus promised in John 14 verse 26, and thereby, it is a work of the Spirit that allows us to remind it of everything that Jesus said. Likewise, inside of the four Gospels and Revelation, there are many content promising about the promised pastor. As this is God's promise, they must be fulfilled, isn't it? And also, for us as believers, we are the ones who must know and believe in the word that has been fulfilled according to the promise. Then, through the promised pastor New John, what kind of work does Jesus fulfill at the second coming? Let's find out together. Before we saw the promised pastor of the New Testament is the one who receives the promised blessing of Revelation 2 and 3, the one overcomes. If there's an event of overcoming, then there also must be a spiritual war and a place where this spiritual war happens according to the Bible, there must be a subject to fight and overcome, there also must be a weapon to fight. This war happens in Revelation 12. Let's read Revelation 12, 10 to 11. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Yes, as we saw Revelation 12, starting from verse 1, there's a sign in heaven, there's a woman clothed with a summon and stars that is pregnant with a child. Here, the heaven and the summon and stars is a parable figuratively describing the things of nature. In Genesis 37, Jacob's tabernacle and his family were figuratively described as heaven and its summoned stars. So thereby, 
Heaven refers to the chosen people's tabernacle, and the summoning stars is referring to the chosen people. And also, this place is the tabernacle of the seven golden lamps, and in Revelation 2 and 3, it is the tabernacle of heaven in Revelation 13. This child of Revelation 12, together with his brothers, fights and overcomes the group of the dragon, the beast with seven heads and ten horns, in this tabernacle of heaven, overcoming by fighting with the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. This war is a spiritual war fighting with the word. It is God's group and Satan's group fighting through the word of testimony. And there was a victory by this child. In Revelation 12, the one overcomes. By fighting and overcoming the group of the dragon, finally, there is God's kingdom, power, and salvation. Through those who are victorious in Revelation 12, in Revelation 15, God uses them as the bulls of wrath. They are the ones who saw everything at the place where the betrayal and destruction happened. They are the witness. They are those who fought and overcome the group of the dragon of Satan, so that is why they can be used as the bulls who contain God's wrath. And then in Revelation 16, to the betrayer and to the destroyers that deceive all nations, the bulls of wrath are poured and by that, the betrayer and the destroyer are judged. Also, in Revelation 18, it is Babylon, the home for demons, that become judged. By that, people who were captured inside of all nations that was deceived, they are now finally able to come out to the nation that God is together with, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. Then at the time of the second coming, how does God's new kingdom, new people, that is the place of salvation, becomes created? Jesus returns at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, becomes one with the promised pastor, and firstly harvests the fruits that are born through the seed that was sowed at the time of the first coming. According to the promise of Revelation 14, those who are born of God's seed becomes harvested. And then in Revelation 7, according to those words of Revelation 7, with the revealed word they are sealed, and then the twelve tribes are created. These 12 tribes are God's kingdom of priests who have been purchased through the blood of Jesus. In other words, the sealed 12 tribes, 144,000. And after the 144,000 are sealed, they're the great multitude in white that come out from the great tribulation. They become the people who wash themselves with the blood of Jesus. This kingdom of God created at the time of the second coming. They are the ones when the previous era that have sinned just like the days of Noah, days of Lot, become ended. And now it is a new kingdom, new people, the 12 tribes that become newly created. This becomes a place where God and the kingdom of heaven comes down to and becomes one. Like this, finding the place where the one overcomes the promised pastor, spoken through the Bible, and this kingdom of heaven, the 12 tribes, becomes a way to receive atonement of sin at the time of second coming and be led to salvation and kingdom of heaven. To our beloved, family of faith. Today, according to the promise of Revelation 14 and 7, by keeping the word of promise of the Bible, and also harvesting those who are born of God's seed, and to all saints, congregation members, giving Bible exams, by that sealing with the revealed word, and creating, uh, created as the 12 tribes according to the promise of Revelation, there is such a place that is created. That place is Shincheonji Church of Jesus, where the promised pastor of today is at. Through the promised pastor of the New Testament, today, Shincheonji, according to the Bible, is doing the work of harvesting those who are born of God's seed. And also, by sealing with this word, created the 12 tribes. Then I must check, am I a one who has been harvested or not harvested? Have I been sealed with the word? Do I belong to the 12 tribes or not? We must think. According to the Bible, being harvested and sealed, and by belonging to the 12 tribes, God's kingdom, God's family, I hope that we can all receive the blessing of kingdom of heaven and eternal life. Let us all read Revelation 21, verse 6. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. Yes, thank you for reading. Like this, Jesus spoke of one pastor inside the four Gospels of the New Testament and Revelation 
to this promised pastor, Jesus comes, and by fulfilling everything, in Revelation 21, verse 6, it says, It is done. I'm the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. It is what Jesus says. Yes, today, conclusion of the word is this. In order to save God's people who sinned, the promised pastor who has been sent, promised in the Old Testament, it was Jesus. And also, for the churches of the New Testament, there is also a promised pastor in the New Testament promised to be sent. It is the one who received the open book in Revelation 10, and it is the one who overcomes in Revelation 12 and Revelation 2 and 3. If the Old Testament 39 books was referring to one person, Jesus, then the New Testament 27 books also is telling us about one person, the promised pastor of the New Testament. Like this, the Bible is telling us about this promised pastor promised by Jesus. And also, the promise that we must believe and keep today, it is the New Testament. It is the New Covenant, the book of Revelation. So thereby, in order to know how the book of Revelation's prophecy become fulfilled, one must meet this promised pastor promised by Jesus, listen to his testimony, and also be able to check the words of prophecy and its fulfillment and be able to believe in it and keep it. However, as we see in Luke 18 verse 8, Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Then, at the time of the second coming of the Lord, do I have the faith that is acknowledged by Jesus? We must be, isn't it? And also, as we see in Revelation 22, 18 to 19, if one adds or takes words away from this book of Revelation, one cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, it says. We must know the word, then we will not add or take away, isn't it? At the time of the first coming, one must know Jesus to receive salvation. Likewise, at the time of the second coming, it is a promised pastor of the New Testament, one must know that is the way of salvation. Today, when Revelation is being fulfilled, the one who saw and heard all of its fulfillment of Revelation, and also the one who received the revealed book, and who testifies as a true person giving the word of testimony, there is the promised pastor of the New Testament. To this promised pastor of the New Testament, let us learn the book of Revelation and be the ones who knows God's will properly and be the true believers that can be led to salvation. Next time, it will be the words of Matthew 6, which will be the reference. We will learn Lesson 7, the words of the true meaning of the Lord's Prayer. Then, inside of this Lord's Prayer that Jesus commanded us to pray, what kind of deep meaning is there? Let us learn together. Let us have a heart to anticipate and learn together and receive much grace together. Finally, inside of God and Jesus, the fact that we are one, with that meaning, we will proclaim we are one. We are one in God, Jesus, and the Word. We are one! Let us all pray together. To our truly thankful and gracious Father God, we truly give you all thanks for your great grace and love, especially as you opened the online seminar to all the pastors theology students, and to all the saints around the world, as you allow the revealed word plainly testified to be heard, and allowing us to become one with the word, we truly thank you for this grace. Please allow everyone attending this seminar to have an open heart and receive this word that you deliver in our hearts, and allow the grace to realize the word. Please allow us to become one with the word, and please allow when your will become fulfilled on this earth, even a day sooner, and even in the seminar that will be held in the future, please open the environment so many people can attend, and please guide them to the Word. And through the Word, please allow them the eyes, ears, and the heart to realize and find the promised pastor of the New Testament, allowing us to become one with the promised pastor and become one with the truth. All these words we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you so much for listening well until the end.
The content that we will share together today, the title is Lesson 7, The True Meaning of the Lord's Prayer. The spiritual seed, there is God's seed, but on the opposite, there's also the devil's seed. According to these two kinds of seed, the result becomes greatly different. Your kingdom come, we will find out. It is a very important content. Where is the kingdom that will come down? And when and to where will it come, we must know. As we saw in the video, in the coming Thursday, it will be Intermediate Level Education Lesson 7, The True Meaning of the Lord's Prayer. Time will be the same time as today, 10 o'clock. Please attend, and I hope that we can all realize the precious word of life, the testimony of Revelation by the Old Testament and New Testament chapters. Shincheonji Online Seminar is being broadcasted throughout the whole world through the official YouTube channel of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. To all the people who are thirsty for God's words, these words are delivered. If you have any questions or anything curious of Shincheonji or the word, please call these numbers on the screen. We'll be glad to kindly guide you. Then now, with the Lord's Prayer, we will complete all the orders of Shincheonji Online Seminar. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. To everyone who are together today, thank you so much.